Hey everyone, so I am in my childhood room and I am noticing quite a few themes and I thought it would be fun for me to document some of the things that I still have here. I pretty much have never done a purge or a big clean out of my childhood room, so a lot of it is still intact how it was when I lived here 10 plus years ago, um, plus the little additions that my mom just kind of places in here. She thinks that I'll want something and I do not, and then it just kind of becomes part of the room. I'm looking around and there are um, two main things that you can tell I really loved when I was growing up. So. We're gonna get into a lot of uh, 90s and 2000s nostalgia, and let's get into it. All right, first things first is that when I was probably 14 or 15, I wanted to make my room my own, so I went through all these magazines and I cut out like full pages and I made kind of this like banner around the perimeter of my room and the back side of my door and it's a lot of like surfing pictures, traveling pictures, um, a couple of band pictures and my mom actually loved it for whatever reason she thought it was like the coolest thing and to this day, she always says, when I sell the house, I'm leaving that there. They can leave it up if they want. And uh, she just thinks it's cool. It, I mean, I, I honestly still like it too. It's like, like a collage around my bedroom. And um, if you look underneath, it actually has the old paint. So um, we didn't even like take it down when I wanted to like repaint my room uh, we just left it there and there's like blue paint underneath so that's how much we all enjoyed these <laughs> these magazine pictures around my room it's funny looking at the pictures I chose to put up around my room too because they're so old like one of the advertisements is for an iPod Nano and uh, true, I miss those. I miss having a device for just music. And I hope we go back to that someday. Who knows what will happen. But I think I liked having the separation. Also, talking about nostalgia, iPods. When I think of an iPod, immediately I think of 7th grade, the school bus, and listening to, specifically, the song Young and Aspiring by Under Oath. That's my iPod memory. Moving on. I also noticed too, there's an advertisement, maybe not an advertisement, just like a photograph from a magazine, of like a skateboarder uh, skating over someone and that person on the bottom, I'm pretty sure is Sean White. And I just listened to the Armchair Expert um, episode with him. And he is so interesting and has a really nice voice he's actually is really nice to listen to and I didn't realize I don't think I realized then that that's who that was so that's funny and I just have so many like surfing and travel pictures and they're just nice to look at because you know I was so young I was like like I said 14 or so doing this and I didn't know where I would go and where I would travel to in my lifetime. And, you know, now I'm 29 and I've traveled to multiple countries and like have seen a bit of the world. I still have a lot more to see, but um, looking at these pictures and like some of them are like recognizable and it's just cool to think of myself as someone who is so excited to live and explore and see things and be inspired by things and to now know that I've I've done that I've been living that I've been feeling inspiration from all around and that I've been kind of fulfilling that over these years of my life so it's just always good to like reflect back I just love that so much. I just love having little like documentations of 
my younger self, past selves, that I can go to as like a, a marker of my personal growth over time, whether that's a journal entry or pictures on my wall or pictures, photographs, things I've kept around my bedroom. It's just so interesting to see how we grow and grow up and evolve and what we experience over time and what we never would have thought we would experience when we were at that age. But as you can see here, there um, is one uh, band in particular that I loved uh, in the early 2000s and that is the Jonas Brothers and I have their poster here of when you look me in the eyes tour um i you'll have we'll have to do like a fact check i i don't remember what year this was i would guess 2009 that's what i would guess um but i i went to that show i saw that that tour of theirs i went to that concert it was you know one of the most exciting things that that could have ever happened to me at the time i was um just in love with them to this day actually a date will will come around and i'll be like oh like i i feel like today is something like what is happening today and what it is sometimes is one of the jonas brothers birthday um it, it just happened a couple weeks ago it was august 15th and Yes, I still remember. That is Joe Jonas's birthday. And I same thing. I was thinking, oh, August 15th, like that's that's something. What is that? It was it was his birthday. So, I was a extreme Jonas brother fan. I would scour the internet for every single interview they did, every magazine that they were in. I bought and I read and you know, back then, the internet wasn't as saturated as it is now, so there was a time when I believe I watched every single interview that existed of them on YouTube, and I would just be immersed. I would just absolutely love everything that had to do with them and like the whole camp rock thing i was really into that i was i think 14 when that came out so i was like kind of right on the cusp of being like too cool for it but i was still young enough where i was into it and that's actually what made me play music more often so i would want to learn those songs like the jonas brothers and demi lovato that is what I wanted to learn. They really inspired me to write my own songs and, and perform. And I think there was like an underlying hope that if I learned how to play their songs that they would uh, notice me or something or you know that fantasy that I think a lot of uh, young people have that you think you're, you're gonna be called on stage because there was like, you know, you see that happening. Some concerts, they call fans up on stage, and I would have these visions of, well, I gotta be ready for that. Like, they're gonna call me up on stage, and I'm gonna sing their song, and I need to be ready. So yeah, so that, they inspired me, actually, a lot. And if you look on my music YouTube channel, the very first video that I ever posted was a Demi Lovato cover actually sitting I think right here so if you watch my old covers you'll see that a majority of them are me in this room which is kind of cute and I um, that's why I kind of want to make this video too because I know that my mom won't live here forever and I want to capture it so big Jonas Brothers fan here okay so keeping on this Jonas Brothers theme now I love the Jonas Brothers, right? And I am obsessed with their every move. I know what they're doing. I know where they are. <laughs> okay, no, I, I didn't stalk them, but I knew which bands they liked and supported and tried to um, help out and you know who they brought on their tours and blah, blah, blah. So there was a band called 
honor society that they helped out i don't really know that i don't remember the whole situation now but they um, were connected in some way now the honor society they were playing in new york city and i was like i know that the jonas brothers are going to be there i just know it and i need to be at this honor society show so i convinced my mom and dad and my little brother so like my older sisters are like too cool for this they don't like the jonas brothers they don't want to go to this so i got my little brother to go well a camera died of course but as i was saying so yeah i forced my family to come to new york city with me to see this honor society show and i have the little signed poster here I uh, met them afterwards, and you know what? I was correct that during the middle of the concert, I'm looking around the whole time, very aware of my surroundings, and I'm standing up on kind of the balcony part with my brother, and I look over, and there they are, the Jonas Brothers, just right over on the other side of the balcony, and it was a small venue, so... It, so they weren't that far away and I could see them pretty clearly and they were just sitting up at the top watching the show and that was enough for me <laughs> to make it all worth it and I didn't like meet them or anything they kind of like snuck out um, but I was at least able to see them from a distance that was much closer than I would if I were to go to a Jonas Brothers concert. So that was my prerogative there, and I was able to, to see the Jonas Brothers a little uh, closer than I would in concert, and you know, that's what I did. I forced my whole family to go. Okay, anyway, I feel like everyone had a comfort item when they were a kid too, and this was mine. I can't believe I'm gonna show it on camera. This is my little lamb. Um, we called her Lammy, and she has this little shirt on that was supposed to be my like newborn shirt, but I was way too small. I was born early, so they put it on Lammy, and um, I took Lammy with me everywhere, and she stays here. I don't keep her with me, but um, she was very special to me and is definitely still a comfort item when I see her. So now my whole life I've had a thing with lambs. I just love lambs. They're my favorite animal and my whole family still, you know, talks to me about lambs if they're at a farm or something. They will send me pictures of lambs and I just think they're so cute. Now I don't know if this was just me. There's this book called Assholes Finish First by Tucker Max and it was really popular, I don't know if it was like within my group of friends in, in high school, like early high school, or or what. I don't even remember how I learned about this book, maybe it was the internet, but I remember like wanting to get this book. And I mean, it's amazing that my mom got it for me because... It literally says on the back, stories of wildly entertaining depravity and sexual debauchery. Um, and like, I'm like 14 or <laughs> asking for this. Like, why, why did I want this? And like, yeah, he looks like a real asshole. And from what I remember, I, rem I did read the book and it was very inappropriate, especially for me and pretty gross. And I don't know what his deal is now. I don't know what he does. And I don't really care to know. I, I, can, I can do without this, yeah. Okay, other things. Other things in my room were uh, these like old little love notes from people and from my past and I've kept them. Sometimes I do read them. Sometimes I probably, well, it's been a couple years now, but I have definitely gone back and read them. And I, I like 
having them. I have like no connection to these people anymore, but um, it's, but at the same time I kind of do because I feel like when you connect with someone at that age in your life, it's such like a pivotal moment and everything is so intense then that even if like you lose touch with people or whatever happens, you still feel like deeply connected to them at least a little bit and at least that's true for me. So I think this it's cute to read sometimes. I kind of like going back and just like remembering the emotions that I felt. And you know, I write songs too. And I've written songs for most of my life, I feel like, or you know, when I started becoming a real person, like 12-ish. And so I have some of these things, like my emotions and love life, like documented in songs. And it's kind of nice to also have them be accompanied by these little love notes. It kind of just brings back a lot of memories. Okay, so I talked about the Jonas Brothers theme here. Okay, that was the first big theme I've, I've noticed in my bedroom. Now, the second big theme, going back a little, but going back to the 90s here, I was absolutely obsessed with the Titanic. Let me show you. So here is the crusty old Titanic 2 part VHS tape. Because the movie was so long, it wouldn't fit on one. And I, what, I think this came out in 1993, I want to say. Again, I need to like fact check this. Does it say? Oh, 1998? Yeah, 1993 sounds too bold. I think it was 1998. And I would literally watch the Titanic every day when I came home from school when I was in kindergarten. I'd be five years old and I would ask my mom to, to watch this movie. And, you know, I was so young, she didn't even, like, care about the scene where, like, you know, she's naked and stuff because I just didn't get it. I'm, I'm literally five so I would I would also like watch from the beginning and only like you know have the attention span to watch the first whatever hour probably not even so I just always would watch it from the beginning and then my sisters have the memory too of like come, they would come home from their school day because they had like a longer school day and it would always be at the same part so I would I just loved something about this I just loved I loved Leonardo DiCaprio, obviously, which we'll get to in a second, um, but this movie just like kills me. I haven't watched it in years because it's sad, and I don't know why I wanted to watch it so much. It's a sad movie. It's a sad situation, um, but of course, you know, touching at times, and it's Leonardo Kate Winslet, like, it's, that's the dream team. Yeah, like, come on. Ugh. Ugh, and that scene. And they're like, running through the water. And then this scene, you know, when they're like, on the, uh, the focus? On the staircase, and he hands her the note. Gosh, I would think about that all the time. Like, how I need to be in a ball gown someday, and walk downstairs, and someone needs to slip me a note. And that's like the perfect thing that could happen. So then, so Leonardo DiCaprio, you know, I loved him. I don't remember owning this. I found this in my closet. And it's just, you can see what this is here. It's just a huge, <laughs> a huge poster of young, Leonardo DiCaprio. I mean, that's like, whew. I don't think I ever had this on my wall. I, I must have, but I don't remember. I don't remember that being on my wall, but it must have been. Um, I just was obsessed with him too. That was probably my first obsession. My first love was Leonardo DiCaprio. And then it quickly moved, well not quickly, and then it moved to the Jonas Brothers, specifically Joe Jonas. 
he was my number one. My room is just filled with my little childhood crushes here. But no one can argue about the Titanic. It's, it's a great movie. So I did have good taste when I was young <laughs> with movies. <laughs> I mean, I have like other things like my, what is this, communion cross? Anyone else who grew up Catholic? And you put like your three qualities around the cross. One of mine is sensitive, and that is still true. Sensitive, sweet, and angel, I guess. I can't read down here. I think it says something else. Oh, imaginative? Sensitive, sweet, and imaginative. I'll take that. I'm still those things, I think. And I'm just a little baby, so that's me in like second grade, probably. All the writing is coming off. It looks like a wedding dress with the lace. My dad actually wrote on this, this handwriting. Coming back home is always special to me in a deeper way, I think, because it was where my family was all together. So I hope this was a little bit nostalgic for you too. Um, it's been <laughs> really interesting to see what I still have here. Also makes me want to maybe clean out a little bit. Maybe it's time. <laughs> I've documented it here and maybe it's time to let go of some things. And if you want to see the YouTube video that I mentioned of my little Demi Lovato cover um, on this very bed, probably, I don't know, 14 years ago? Oh my gosh. Um, I will leave a link in the description so you can check that out. But thanks so much for watching and I will catch you next time. Bye.